All right. Okay. So, Silvio, let me just express my gratitude. Uh, thank you very much for attending uh, this this interview. Um, it's great having you here. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Likewise. All right. So, um, I've got sets of questions um, that I'd like to ask you. Of course, uh, pertaining to your mystery school. So, the first one is for those who don't know what a mystery school is. Could you explain what exactly it is? And in addition to that, please uh, be specific in what your school provides. Well, um, yeah, mystery schools have been misinterpreted, but basically, a mystery school is. Uh, that knowledge was, which isn't um, necessarily right in front of our eyes, which is more of a hidden knowledge, something you must seek out. Okay, all right. And uh, um, yeah, please continue. Yeah, it's, it's a tradition. It's a traditional school set in um, exploring uh, many things, esoteric teachings, which again means hidden teachings uh, about ourselves, about human nature, and the the art and science of philosophy and healing. Mm -hmm. And where is your school situated? Well, our school is actually uh, in Johannesburg, is situated in Bedford View. But we are part. Of, we are part of an international school, which is in over um, forty countries now. Uh, the headquarters for the Western world is in Toronto, Canada, and the other headquarters, where the founder um, resides, is in Jap Tokyo, Japan. Ah, okay. Great. All right. Thank you very much for explaining that. Um, so, from my understanding, what you're saying is that. Um, basically, mystery schools have been misinterpreted and they're just basically conveying uh, hidden knowledge to the public, knowledge that's not necessarily available to the average person. Am I correct? Well, knowledge that wasn't available to the average person in the past, which has now been brought in public um, mm -hmm. by the modern mystery school, but there, there are many other um, schools out there who are teaching occult sciences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, and, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What's your question? So, so how does yours differ? So, um, so occult knowledge, let's just say esoteric knowledge, and then we have a mystery school. Okay, so, um, how, how does that differ? Can you, like, please, like, okay, so in a cult school, what do they do um, in the mystery school um, well, exactly? Well, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. Occult just means mystery. And I can only speak for our, for our own school. And our school is uh, what, what would be considered a group of initiates um, dedicated to preserving these ancient teachings mm. and which are working together to bring light onto the planet and to heal others. You know, like I said, there there was a time when it wasn't um, in plain sight, and yes. in those times, one one would have to be in, invited to study with the school after you know careful consideration and observation in order to prove themselves. But because of the massive shifts on the planet today, uh, humanity is a little more awake to their true divinity and. That's the mission of the mystery school is to awaken people to their um, divinity and who they truly are. Great, great. Okay, great answer there. Um, I will get back to that. Just want to go to the next question. Um, and this is pertaining to human potential. So what do you think is the number one factor or the number one reasons or the, the reason, sorry, uh, that contributes to limiting the human potential, limiting um, our purview of our divine nature? What stops us from seeing that? Well, of course, that is that is uh, you know part of a larger subject in which we um, in which we delve into and need further study towards. But ultimately, 
it 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 is it was said very well by Marion Williamson and repeated in Nelson Mandela's favorite or not favorite but most po- most popular speech mm-hmm. in which he says it is basically ourselves we we are the business, biggest obstacle to our full potential so everything we teach is about overcoming that that self that part of us which is limiting us and you know and it is you know, like it was worded is our biggest fear is our is our big is our greatest self mm-hmm. is to stand in our power you know just using different words to describe it no oh, okay all right okay i think i definitely agree with that um i definitely agree that we are the ones responsible for restricting our uh, potential and it, it, it goes hand in hand with uh, not being able to um, access or pay attention to our blind spots as, as individuals. Um, so I'd like to get you to, to explain something for me. Like, so then how do we get to avail ourselves to ourselves? How do we know ourselves more and how do we stop ourselves from uh, seeing our divine nature? So by be, by joining a, a mystery school, you become an initiate in taking the tools and the knowledge you gain to see those shadows. You know, again, those shadows are a mystery to us because they're not in our awareness. So one one needs to gain the tools necessary to be bring those into the light, to bring one's self awareness to those obstacles so that they can overcome them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so, okay. so, so how do you do that? By becoming an initiate in the school, by, by taking the tools that have been proven over time to work and applying them to your life. All right, great stuff. And so um, it's been known in... Buddhist traditions, right, that um, the root cause of human suffering is actually uh, rooted uh, towards desire, you know, so desire is actually the main property of our suffering, and Buddhism explains it in the sense that because um, when you desire, you have expectations, and when those expectations are not met, um, suffering then dawns upon your experience. So I'd like you to tell me um, h- how much do you agree with the sentiment and um, can you further elaborate on your solution to suffering and how it differs from this point of view? Great question. So again, well, for starters, me personally, I believe that is a genuine statement. And I believe there's truths in many religions of the world and many great teachings that we can apply to our life into our lives uh, in order to become better people and to live to our highest potential. Now, in this in the discussion of desire, I would also agree that most desires come from our ego and that that spiritual aspect of ourselves or our higher self in which you um, can call it in whichever way you want to call it really doesn't have desires Mm -hmm. and and it is those desires that are generated from our ego which do come with expectations which do come with disappointment and are usually out of alignment with what we really need. Hmm. Okay. All right. So um, what I'm hearing from you is that we have different aspects to ourselves. Um, I'm hearing you mention ego um, and our true selves. So could you please elaborate on what you mean exactly by that? Because um, on my channel, in fact, I was actually going to prelude to this uh, question, but we might as well tackle it now. 
Um, in my channel, I actually mention polarity consciousness and pure consciousness. And um, in terms of polarity consciousness, it, it, uh, I basically describe it as um, acting in uh, fragmentation. So um, breaking um, two things apart, right? Two apparently two things, but in actuality, it's it's all oneness. For example, like self and the other, uh, and uh, good and bad, the hot and the cold, you see. So there's always the uh, distinguishing factors that it creates in, in our experiences. And then on the other hand, we've got another type of uh, consciousness, which is pure consciousness that um, deals with that, that deals with reality head on, you know, that doesn't approach reality from uh, ideas and conceptions and illusions and, and fragmentations. So could you please elaborate um, on the different aspects to self and, and how we can actually use these aspects to our advantage? So there, there are many philosophies which help to define the self and it would be wise to say that there are more aspects of the self than a singular one. Like you've, you've spoken, you're using the, the definitions of polarity consciousness um, to a way to describe the, these, these states. And there's not to say that one is more correct than the other. I would say that they're just creating a language that may assist someone in coming to, again, awareness of these parts of themselves, whether you want to call it the id or the ego, the negative ego, conscious, unconscious, fragmentation, wh whatever words you find, they give us, they give two people a language to, to speak about this and a language which can you know, assist in one realizing these truths about themselves. And again, you, you may, you would call that a mystery, right? A mystery is something we're looking to solve in its, in its true definition. It's something we do not understand, which we are looking to solve. So we can philosophize about this as much as we like um, until we come to a truth. And that's, that's what it, philosophy is based in. And, and, philosophy has it serves its purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i if, agree 100 percent yeah it, the, if that answers your question yes okay um so then what is okay so what is the solution then uh, in these different aspects to self you know because um if one is not actually initiated in, in how to deal with these variant uh, of self, then it becomes quite complicated for a person to realize a divine nature, as you can imagine. Uh, if you're stuck in the ego, um, then you're most probably stuck in ideas and, 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 and concepts about the world that are not necessarily, uh, they don't necessarily go hand in hand with truth. So how is it that we can tap into truth and tap into our true nature and realize the illusionary uh, components of the ego? Good question. So where I would start is understanding that in these great philosophical, philosophical schools that existed on the planet for, that have existed for a hundred of years. And if you look at um, the temple of Socrates, you will see that above the entrance of the temple, it says, when translated, it says, to know thyself. Hmm. And that is, that is the motto of the ancient mystery schools, is to know thyself. And we've, we've, as we live through life, we've gone away from who we truly are. And now we need to basically reverse the process. And that really is the only way to find true healing and and to overcome the ego is to truly know ourselves. How are we going to do that? We, we, a great solution is to look at a mystery school. Why? Because these traditions, these teachings have been handed over down over time for thousands of years. And they've, 
been proven by time, which is the only true measure of, of success. And because of all the people that have created great success, that have created um, uh, evolutionary advancements, conscious advancements in life, uh, scientific advancements, have all um, studied in some way or other in these traditions and have used the principles of these schools, which, like I said, have been around for thousands of years. All right. You know, uh, speaking of science, um, it, it's quite um, interesting that science is actually coming full circle with spirituality. Um, I'm not too sure if you're um, familiar with quantum physics, um, but the discoveries there have been uh, immensely helpful for uh, a lot of uh, spiritual doctrines, not doctrines per se, but spiritual notions that were a bit difficult to understand, um, but now that there's a science to it, um, it actually helps. Uh, for example, let me give you um, one experiment that was done. Uh, it's called entanglement. I'm not too sure if you're familiar with that. Have you heard of it before? Quantum entanglement? No, I'm not familiar with it, but I can okay. answer your I can answer your question bef before you tell me the story. Okay. If you, if you if you'd like, and it's, go ahead. It's really, it's it's really simple. I I spoke about philosophy, and the other aspect of uh, the mystery tradition is science. But the 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 problem that's existed so long is that we went from a philosophical society to a scientific society and which we are still living in now and this scientific society wants everything to be proven by science otherwise we don't we won't believe it everybody wants to see it before they believe it and but now like you've said especially in the advancements of quantum science we are understanding that Energy is not black and white. It's not positive and negative. There are other quantum aspects to it. And these are the, again, these are the mysteries we do not understand. But if you look back at the ancient teachings of many uh, traditional or ancient teachings, they're just answering, science is just catching up to those teachings, especially exactly. if you look at, at Kabbalah. These teachings already existed, but now science is just proving them. So it's taken us literally over 2,000 years to create scientific evidence of these teachings that already existed on the planet. But when we became a scientific society, we chose not to believe them anymore, and we chose to believe in science. Yeah, um, exactly. That's very true. And um, as I was just saying, the, the experiment that I was talking about is called quantum entanglement. So basically, they took two subatomic particles, right, and they, they uh, separated them through vast distances. Um, and whatever you did to one particle immediately and i mean instantaneously affected the other so um basically so yes. distance yeah exactly that everything is interconnected so um what, what are your thoughts on that well now that you now that you've explained it i am aware of that um, project experiment i have i have uh read about it and again it's it just proves the teachings that we are all connected through our DNA and our DNA is that common blueprint, which we, which makes us one. And the fact that you can separate the DNA on its very cellular level and still be connected to it, whether it's in another room, uh, sharing that stimulus, shows us that we are more than who we think we are hmm. at the at the basic level we are more than who we think we are and more than science has been able to explain about us so far 
You know, um, what you said was quite interesting, especially the portion of DNA uh, that we all share that, which gets me to my next question and gets me to wonder, you know, um, the free will hold determinism. So a lot of Eastern traditions, right, uh, continuously point to the fact that we are not the doer of, of, of um, our actions. You know, there is no self behind actions and um, the self is actually an illusion. And I see a lot of your philosophies in the mystery school are, are tied with the idea that we create our own reality and that we create our own experiences. So um, how does one integrate um, uh, the, the the huge distinctions that are made between a deterministic world and a world where you actually co-create and you're actually a active participant in, in creating your own reality. So so how how do we balance these out? Because it's not only uh, Eastern traditions that believe that um, things are determined, some of them, but um, science as well believes heavily that the universe is quite predetermined. So how do we mold these understandings with, with the teachings that we that you've come across in ancient philosophies that we actually do have control uh, in creating our experiences? Hmm. So again, very good question. Your 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 questions are very uh, in depth and could could. You know, our, our large subjects, actually, where we can, you know, to, di to dissect um, a deterministic system with against the system of, of free will, if you will, could, could, could be days and weeks, you know. It's not, uh, those are not simple subjects. But if I were to explain, try to explain it simply, I would say that my answer would be that we're living in a dualistic world and in that dualistic world there is cause and effect that has been proven by science so our our will can affect our actions and in sense we are co-creating in an environment which can be manipulated if you will um, with your will Basically, so, so I do believe we are determiners of energy, but I do believe we also have something called free will. And I, I really would see one going hand in hand with the others because having will means that we can determine. Good point. So, so... I think that, again, the, the contradictions would have to be something you have to look at personally. Uh, I myself and the tradition of the mysteries, mystery schools, it does not tell you how, how to think. Mm -hmm. it, tells, it tells you to question. It, um, and it's so it's asking you to question and it's not we're not necessarily providing the answers for you but you're you're learning to answer the questions for yourself and so if if presented with let's say a deterministic um, philosophy how do you how can you apply that to your life how would it work for your life and only through experimentation which sounds very scientific can you come to see if it works for you? And if it works for you, then who am I to say not to do it? Um, so, so yeah, I would say that the contradictions and the similarities are yours to discover. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I can present the subject like you have presented it to me, and and we can discuss it, but ultimately. It's about asking the right questions for yourself to get the the most benefits out of out of it out of it you know yeah. out of whatever yeah you know um so you you brought up a very good point uh, in the sense that um, we have to ask the right questions 
But my uh, question then is, uh, how do we know we're asking the right questions? How do we then learn to refine our questions? Because sometimes um, the questions that we ask um, do not necessarily lead to answers that uh, can uh, assist us. So um, what do you recommend in, in terms of uh, a person learning how to refine their questions? Because not everybody knows how to question correctly, naturally. Uh, some people have to um, uh, attend philosophy classes, you know, uh, practice uh, logical reasoning and all that kind of stuff. But uh, what what would you suggest in, in, in your experience? So, to, so we're finding what is what is you you've answered you've answered it yourself in if if the results are not bringing you what you intended or haven't worked to for to better your life yourself then you've asked the wrong question so yes it would for starters we need to redefine the question we need to ask a different question so how do how do we learn to ask the best question by studying in a tradition like ours. So that is that is part of what we what I teach you. You know, and a great uh, study for that is Kabbalah. And in Kabbalah is through the study of Kabbalah you le basically learn how to ask the right question. So that's why we hold Kabbalah courses once a year. And these courses are a year long of a year long of study of Kabbalah and learning how to ask the right questions in essence to know ourselves again. If, if we're in a certain, you know, if we're where we are, we're going to be asking questions from where we are. So in order to get ahead, we need to ask those questions, which will, you know, I'm making it simple, but to get ahead. And and so without, you know, again, Kabbalah is a huge subject. Kabbalah is, is a lifelong study. So, but that's where I would start. That's where I would start. And I can only say for me that um, studying Kabbalah in this tradition has brought me the most results and the most success of overcoming my ego in my life. And, and and I continue to, to study Kabbalah every year. We're actually holding a program right now, um, we're in the, which we're in the middle of, and we'll be starting another year-long program in Kabbalah in December. So, so yeah, I would recommend doing the research, um, going online, going to the Modern Mystery School of South Africa, checking the calendar, going to... Our website in Bedford uh, for Bedford View, which is called Lamina Lukem. Co. Za, and looking at some of the courses that we um, offer, specifically the Empower Thyself Workshop, which is a two-day workshop which gives all of the foundational teachings uh, of the mystery tradition, and from there it just opens the doors to to everything and you will also receive initiation into this into this lineage which helps to expand your mind and and it and so open your mind to larger concepts to more of a larger scope of thinking which i've seen you mention in your videos as well is that we need to see the bigger picture and so in order to see the bigger picture we have to separate ourselves from thinking small and that's what empower thyself is about it's about learning to think outside the boxes to empower you great great thank you for that okay so i uh, will put the um websites on the just at the bottom of the video so that our viewers can look up Kabbalah and hopefully uh, attend one of the classes as well. Um, so I've got another question, you know, so 
I'm sure you, you've heard about The Secret um, from Rhonda Bryan. You know, uh, that has pioneered a whole movement in terms of people's understanding of the law of attraction and for the fact that, you know, we can actually have and be anything that we want if we actually just put our minds to it. So um, what is the process of manifestation from from your uh, understanding? How does one manifest uh things into their experiences hmm. again this is a very uh, large subject and as you you know if you really wanted to delve into the law of attraction there's books upon books um, if you wanted to follow those teachings so in the same way it takes prolonged study it's it's it takes applying these teachings over time to see the results. But at the end of the day, it's about applying your will. You know, just by applying your will, you can manifest things in your life simply as, again, becoming a determiner of energy. If I wanted to make a fruit salad, I just have to get some fruit, some different fruits and make a fruit salad. I know that sounds silly, but it's that simple. How do we manifest? By putting something in motion. And again, mm -hmm. it goes back to um, one of the main Kabbalistic teachings is that there's a four-step process. Idea, thought, plan, and action. And mm -hmm. so it's broken down very simply for you. And once you learn to... Um, um, ex ex work with this uh, strategy again through the study of Kabbalah, then you can create more abundantly for that which you would like to see in your life by applying those four um, steps idea, thought, plan, action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think idea and thought um, connotates to um, imagination, right? Like, um, because I think that's an essential part in, in any um, endeavor that you have in terms of manifesting things in your life. You have to see it first in the mind's eye and um, not only just see it, but uh, there has to be a high resonance to it. You need to be passionate about the, the image that's actually in your mind so that... Um, you're attracted to all the actions that you'll need to take, you know, in, 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 in order to achieve that. Because um, what I notice with a lot of people, I don't know if you've noticed this as well, is that uh, people will have intentions or um, expect something to happen to their lives or expect um, to, to be gifted by something, um, like maybe a new car, a new house, a new lover, whatever it is. But... Um, they not necessarily chronically uh, seeing this every day. So when the outside world, when reality shows an image uh, that, that's not congruent with the image that we have in our minds, we feel disappointed and we want to give up. So how do you um, then suggest people use their imagination? Because I think that's a very powerful thing in, in the manifestation process. Yes, true. So this, again, this is a large subject. We could discuss for hours about how to apply your imagination, how to make your imagination stronger, how to set your imagination in the right direction. And that's why you do need a plan. You can't, you can't just think about something and then you're going to attract it. It's not that simple, you know, uh, and there, you know, there's, there's, there's more to, to attraction and how that works than, you know, just that simple thing of, well, if I keep thinking about this, if I keep meditating on it, then it's just gonna, then it's just gonna come to me. It's, it, it's, it's not that easy. And although it sounds simple, these are these are uh, more in depth. There's more. There's more to it than that. That's that's why you know there's there's courses, you know, 
after you watch the movie the secret you're not just going to be a master at attracting things you know and then there's 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 more courses and more books and um what are those um study you know um, study books and things like that and in that sense um in our in our tradition we would again you would have to start applying kabbalah to your life and and that is not something as easy as saying idea, thought, plan, action. We need to learn about each process on the way. Just like, you know, just like a, uh, a company would. You know, a company has to have an idea. They have to create a model. They have to find the best way to put it into production. And the best way to get it out there is always more than one step. And so each step is a, is a larger discussion. And... And that's where the more you understand Kabbalah, the clearer it becomes. And the more you learn to apply it to your life, the more abundant you become. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, um, okay, so um, I see what you're saying. And I'd like for you to explain to me... Um, Okay, so one of the things that was mentioned in The Secret and a lot of uh, philosophies and ancient traditions as well uh, is the practice of meditation, you know, just clearing your mind and, and clearing your thoughts. So um, do you um, engage in this in the mystery school and how crucial or important do you see meditation in an individual's day-to-day -day life? Meditation should be a part of uh, uh, people's day-to-day -day lives. That's how we see it. And in the in the tradition, we teach specific types of meditation, which will assist you in connecting with your higher self, which is which is your true self. And f we can only truly manifest from there, because our because our minds are polluted and our egos are constantly getting in the way um, we need we need meditation on a daily basis and so if you look if you look around this powerful tool you know we don't teach our kids to meditate in, in the school sure. system do do we but yet it's very important only now especially in eastern schools have they realized the benefits of bringing it into into schools and to start teaching it at a young age and that's one of the ways that we can create a better society is is to start teaching kids how to meditate in uh, from a young age and like that is that is one of again that's one of the main things we are teaching um we hold at our center we hold meditation every week publicly and okay. we use we use a very specific system called max meditation um that has, again is, has has been developed by the founder of the school and also it's it's part of you know we we are working with initiations um physical activations hmm. and and sacred meditations those are the three main tools of the of our mystery school yes Okay, so you have different types of meditations for uh, different types of processes in, in, in awakening uh, the, the individual's potential. Uh, am I understanding it correctly? Yes, so each type of meta, um, uh, meditation has a specific outcome that it wishes to achieve. And like I said, one of those is you know of course it's always about quieting the overactive mind especially uh, in today's society where our minds are getting worse and the and the amount of thoughts we're processing just in one minute is increasing by the thousands because of our the way we're living our lives and and just this this amount of stimulation that is around us and slow we need to learn to slow down the mind one of the one of the main you know especially in my clients what i see is all this anxiety and stress and that's because we haven't pr practiced meditation 
And that, so that is one of the first things I will teach someone to do is to meditate. And, and it's not like, and again, a lot of people um, struggle with it because, um, and they, and they give up and they give up and, and that's sad. And one of the keys to, to succeeding is to not give up, to keep, that's why it's called practicing meditation. It's not, it's not meditation. You know, we're, it's not a specific goal. We need to continue to practice it. And that, that's why we hold weekly meditations. Um, one doesn't necessarily have to meditate on their own. One can use this tool, which is based, is a guided meditation where someone else is, mm. is guiding, guiding you through the meditation. So that's a, a very successful form of meditation. All right. Great. For, great. All right. Uh-huh. No, I was just going to say for beginners, it's a it's the best place to start. Yes, very true. Um, and I can attest to that um, in terms of your clients coming in with anxiety and stuff. So I used to struggle with that as well. But the more I meditated, the more uh, my attention gave less insistence on uh, anxious thoughts. I don't know if you understand what I mean. I was able to separate myself from my thoughts and, and, and stand back as a witnesser and an observer of my thoughts and not be hypnotized and swayed by my thoughts, which, which is something um, a lot of people struggle with um, in terms of uh, their journey in discovering themselves. Is this um, continuous... Um, uh, self-talk and self-criticism that that occurs within people's minds you know and so what 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 suggestion could you give okay besides meditation we know uh, that you can recommend somebody meditates okay but um, what what could you recommend to to an individual that's not even you know like fully aware of uh, the magnitude of the mind's um, uh, like way in, in debilitating the self and, and, and not allowing the full potential to actually come forth. So what would you recommend for somebody to actually see that um, in their day, li day, day lives that um, thoughts is actually um, coming in the way in their journey? So one of the most powerful teach, um, <clears throat> one of the most powerful things that, that, they can do for themselves is attending the empower thyself workshop and having what we call a life activation which is a modality which has been um, handed down to us through this lineage of uh, King Solomon which is the lineage in which our our tradition is based and this this will begin the process of eliminating this negative self-talk and and then we recommend taking the empower thyself workshop so you can understand where this self-talk is coming from and mm -hmm. you, like you've kind of stated is is that we need meditation is one of those tools and i'm going to go back to the um the you know the not the the proven knowledge again, by science, that w our thoughts are running mad with us mm -hmm. and we, we need to um, become the master of our thoughts mm -hmm. rather than allowing our negative thoughts to run our life. Mm -hmm. And like, like we started this conversation, that's what defines the, f the facts that that we are getting in our own way and and how we get in our own way is by our thoughts mm. great great um so with anybody like on the journey to self-discovery um i'm sure there's material that they would love to be exposed to um in order to facilitate their journey so what books would you recommend from your own personal experience that has helped you transform your mind and transform yourself Um, wow, that's, uh, that's, um, hmm. you know, there again, so you would have to start 
you know, with books that, you know, there's, there's, there's books at a beginner's level and there's books at a more advanced level. So, you know, I would say start at a beginner's level so it can be much more understanding to you. And again, we, we go back to a simple, sim simpler language and a more foundational place to start like the empower thyself workshop which truly everything expands on from that one workshop in that in that workshop we actually give people a reading list of of about uh, i think it's like 70 books or something wow. and we we recommend that you start with those books you know so i, I can't really say um, which one is the best for you? I can tell you that, uh, you know, here's the list that we recommend and, you know, try to, again, it is about empowering you and, and see which, which, which book draws you, which book is, uh, attracting you just to use the words that we've discussed. Um, so, so which book attracts you and, and start there and, and really, you know, I, I can't I can't say, you know, the books that I that have brought me along this path are, are the books that mm -hmm. I needed to they're the books that I needed to read. So I can't say, you know, start start here, you know, unless unless I, I tr truly met the person and and then got to know them. I could say from what I've read, I think this may be a good book for you or take take the empower thyself workshop and then see what see what draws you from this reading list you know one one um actually one one book that i would recommend is is uh, the book by the three initiates and oh. um, um and the title slips slips me right now Okay. Uh, have you heard of it? Um, no. Um, say the name again for me again. Um, the three. It's written by the three initiates. The three initiates. Um, okay. And and uh, it, oh, that's it. It's called the Kabbalion. The Kabbalion. Yes, the Kabbalion. Okay. okay. And right. uh, that's that's a good book that I would say to start with. But again, that's that's. Okay. That has to do with that has to do with um, a Western tradition of you know of metaphysical teachings. Hmm. Okay. You know. All right. And then so I I I don't want to I don't want to get into it um, too much, but you know, there's because I know you wanted to talk uh, to talk about it, but um, there's you know there's a book called the. I, I'm not sure if it's called the Philosopher's Stone. You know, I ha I have to really. Um, sure. Yeah, you know, I have. There's there's so many books out there called the Philosopher's Stone. So again, we recommend uh, reading from specific authors. You know, you can you can go on Google and read it. You, you could see that. You know, you type in a subject, and there's so much content out there. And again, but there's also so much pollution. And so it's, it's you know, re we recommend that you re uh, read specific authors because we know that those authors were initiates in our lineage and they're closest to the, the truth um, mm. or closest to the, the closer aligned to the teachings from, from our tradition. Okay, so the first example you gave were the three initiates. Um, which other authors would you recommend people look up uh, that go hand in hand with the, the, so, the lineage that you're talking about? So uh, again, if you would like to read, you see, if you would like to read about Kabbalah, I would recommend you read such authors as Israel Regarde, uh -huh. um, um, Dion Fortune, these, you know, these these were initiates in the in the Western tradition lineage, and right. you know, 
there are a ton of books out there about Kabbalah. And so a ton of authors uh, um, that have written books about Kabbalah. And so I recommend those two authors. Actually, um, those are a good place to start. But again, those those authors have more advanced books and more simpler books. And I would so I would recommend starting with the simpler books. And I just they just um, I can't I can't think of them right now. Sure. OK. All right. No problem. Um, I just we just wanted. I to wish I would have been more prepared with that for that. No, question. it's a, it's OK. It's OK. It's no problem. Um, I can see um, a lot of the teachings uh, is centered around Kabbalism. So then I would urge anybody who, who watches this video to actually um, look that up. And um, uh, the, the book you mentioned initially was the three initiates, right? Um, Kabbalism. The, no, that's, that's called the the Kabbalion. The Kabbalion, sorry, the Kabbalion. Yes, that's and, correct. And um, and oh, I just I really can't remember. Um, okay. All right. Um, oh, but it, in truth, if if we would, if we considered our tradition, um, if we considered having a Bible in in our book. In our in our in our lineage, it would be the Hermetica. Hermetica, nice. Okay. Yes, but again, the Hermetica has been is an ancient ancient uh, tablets is based on ancient ancient tablets, and there are many people who um, have translated the the teachings of um, Hermes. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, is it um, sourced from the Egyptian uh, civilization, uh, the law of Hermetics, or is that um, from a yes. different? It's it's completely based in Hermetics, and but it's it was it's written by um, what what you who you can find in many traditions called Hermes, and Hermes, you know, mm -hmm. is represented in in the Greeks and. Um, you know, even in, in he, if you may say, appeared in Hermes in uh, Egypt as um, Toth. Toth. Yes, yes, I've heard of him. He was, yes, he was considered Toth to the Egyptians, and you know, he's been. Um, he also appeared to ancient Roman society, mm. and. In, and ancient Greek society. If you start, if you start doing your homework, yeah. um, so 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 again, we we recommend uh, would recommend a specific version of the Hermetica, which is is was is well, uh, sorry, interpreted by his name is Brian uh, P. Coper or Copenhaver, I believe. Yes, oh, Copenhaver. Cop Copenhaver, C O P E N H A V E R. But I'm sure you're going to add it yeah. um, underneath underneath this. And so we recommend reading uh, that translation. We believe that it's the closest translation to the two. Great. So, so, but yeah. again, that book is very, very. Um, I would say it's not something you just read through. It's something you need to read a, a read a few pages and contemplate. Sure. And and read again. So mm -hmm. so yeah, right. it's not it's not a simple book. That's a more advanced book, but that that would be um where a lot of our teachings are drawn from. And that book is about, you know, uh, between six to eight thousand years old wow so okay. so yeah pretty ancient okay that's interesting thank you for that and um can you give us like a mental picture like a mental image on what kind of world you want to create um and and that you would like to experience uh, as a mystery school or an, as, as an individual well, the, the main mission of our school is, is world peace. 
we believe it's something that can exist on the planet. We believe we're we're getting close to it. We we believe that there were times when it has existed in the past. Um, there are legends of a time called Shambhala, and there, you know, if you look at back at there was a period of time where the the Egyptian um, lived in a very uh, peaceful in very peaceful years and you can see that they achieved very advanced technology which we still or science can still not prove how how the pyramids were built yeah and 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 so and so yeah you know we we believe that once we all awaken to our purpose to our divinity and we can live in a higher consciousness we 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 would have peace we wouldn't have if we recognized each other as as great beings or or you know gods in a sense then mm. you know how how would you how would you treat another god you know if mm. we if we if we tra treated each other with with holiness and and reverence sure. and compassion and all those things that the great teachers taught us whether you know jesus christ or buddha muhammad if if we all embrace the the teachings instead of use them to create separatism and and to um t tell each other that mine god is better than your god and my god is the true god you know then then we live in a much more peaceful peaceful way and that's you see a lot of um just to stay, we teach a a universal Kabbalah. There there are many forms of Kabbalah that are associated with different religions, but we we don't teach we don't teach dogma. Mm. We teach we teach a universal Kabbalah that asks you to put these put these teachings into your life. Um, and nice. truly, we 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 don't tell you what religion to follow we we believe religion again has its place and and everything we teach is just to empower you to perhaps um have a greater affi uh, affiliation to your own religion which you already have you know mm -hmm. again religion has its place until it becomes fanatic yeah 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 i i agree 100 percent um I think um, what you said um, resonated with me a lot uh, in terms of treating other people as if they were gods and, and treating other people with reverence. And it's, it's actually uh, one of the fruits of the spirit that uh, Lao Tzu actually mentioned is that once you discover your true self and once you're living in accordance with the Tao, uh, he mentioned the Tao and that was um, a name connotating to God, right? The universal primal energy that creates everything that we see. So he says that one of the essential virtues is, is having a reverence for life. And if you truly have reverence for life, then you automatically and innately have reverence for other people. So I like that point that you mentioned. So is there anything else of your, um, that well, you would well, like to, ex yeah? Sorry, um, but so I, I, would, I would add him to your list as well. Lao Tzu. <laughs> yeah. Great book. Yeah, great man. Um, he actually has a book I can recommend this, um, The Tao Te Ching. Okay, I'll add that in the link description. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Of but course just, I have. Yeah, yeah. He's he's given a lot of uh, scriptures in, in the Tao and, and like how it can benefit your life. But as I was saying, uh, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, is there anything you'd else you'd like to say to the viewers that maybe you felt you didn't get the opportunity to say? Well, again, I'd recommend finding a teacher. There's nothing or a guide. We, in our tradition, we don't we don't believe in. Well, I wouldn't say we don't believe in teachers, but we see ourselves as guides, not teachers. Mm. You know, I'm I, again, I'm not somebody you you come to to find answers. I will teach you to find the answers for yourself. And I, you know, I I just. I would leave people with this, that you are more than you think you are. 
and you are a spiritual being having a physical life. Mm -hmm. All right, Silvio, thank you very much. It's been an honor and a privilege to have you. Um, I, I'd, I definitely think our viewers will gain a lot of value from this interview, uh, from your answers and uh, to your suggestions that they join your course and, and, and uh, go on the Kabbalism and, and also self-discovery. So thank you very much again, Silvio, for coming and, and engaging oh, in this interview. It was my pleasure. Um, you had some really great questions. And and again, I, I, I believe that if, if they can be uh, very much expanded on, if those topics uh, r really resonated with you, then yeah, get in touch and we can explore those topics more together sure. because because you are more than who you think you are and and that's what i want people to realize about themselves and to give them the tools to empower themselves great great i'm 100 percent in support of that all right so Vio, so thank you very much for attending and yeah um to be continued to be continued and best of luck yes. with everything that you're doing. It's great to see a young man um, trying to get these teachings out there. Oh, thank you very much for that. All right. You're Likewise. welcome. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.